Okay, so now it's my turn. Okay, and uh, before I begin, uh, I would like to thank you for the participants, for all your support, uh, because this is our third sauna, third seminar and workshop on America analysis. And uh, hopefully you will gain something, you know, you will gain more ideas, or uh, maybe you have your own method. Yeah, now what you are doing, so maybe you can, you will get more ideas uh, for your new research. Okay, so I would like to really thank all of you that are present today. Okay, so for this slot, um, I'm going to present to you parallel multi-step block method for some large system of ODE. Uh, well, there's a word parallel there. But I'm not expert in parallel programming, okay, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm only the user, okay, I'm, I can't explain to you the uh, architecture of it, okay, but I, what I'm going to share with you is uh, what I have done, okay, uh, my research together with my PhD student. Okay, uh, how we can implement the parallel into our proposed method. Okay, so hopefully that uh, the idea is, well, the idea is not that complicated, it's very simple, uh, but at least uh, hopefully that it can uh, open up your mind because now I should, I know that and hopefully that now you have your own method you have your own research and you have your own program. So then from there you can you will have the idea uh, for the program that you have, which part of the program, which part of uh, in your program that you can really do the parallel. Okay? Because not all programming we can go for parallel. Okay? And as you can see there, solving large system of ODE. Okay, so if we have a very small uh, problem, okay, a very small data, it's not worth it to go for parallel. We need a very expensive calculation, like what uh, Prof. Sarah Ada just mentioned. Her students took about 72 hours, eh? uh, 72 hours uh, to solve uh, the given PDE problem. Uh, maybe uh, that's another one that maybe we can uh, have a look. Okay, so today I would like to share with you okay, and give you a brief idea how, not an expert, okay, I'm still a learner, that we try to implement the parallel, uh, parallel uh, approach in our method. Okay, so... As we know now, the parallel solution of ADE, ODE, has uh, received interest from many researchers. Okay, like we have uh, heard the talk from Prof. Sarah Aida, of course, it's from PDE. Therefore, PDE, when we want to solve, we are going to transform the PDE and it becomes a system of ODE. But, well, it's not really ODE, it will become BVP. Yeah, usually, it becomes BVP, system of boundary value problem. And that one also actually we can solve, uh, but uh, when uh, and the way she described it is very expensive. So well, maybe we can advise for go for parallel. So that's why this is uh, one of the interests uh, for the researcher to use the parallel computing platform. So here we would like to introduce to you well, the, a very simple uh, problem for ordinary differential equations, as you can see here. Okay, we have the y prime, so that means y prime is uh, y1 plus yn, that means it's a very large system of ODE, and then y also have a long list of uh, the y from y1 up to yn, and the f also, as you can see, we have n list of f, okay, so that means it's a very large system. And just a brief uh, literature review here. Uh, well, actually not from 1987, since uh, previously before that, people have tried to uh, go for parallel methods. You know, they, they like to investigate if they can implement the parallel method to solve any large problems. So as you can see here, we have a few 
uh, Brita and Rabia and Tian Chong at all. Even Omar, Omar is uh, uh, he's a student of uh, Prof. Dato Omar Sulaiman. And then Garcia, 2004. And then Mahdi and Sulaiman. Okay, that's uh, from myself and also my supervisor. So we did a study of the parallel methods. And then in 1999, okay. Uh, what Omar has done is that he has developed a parallel explicit and implicit block codes for solving first and higher order ODEs. So that means he has developed his own coding. Okay? And he has even solved for first and higher order. But in this example, I would like to show you only involve the first order ODE. And then in uh, the research that we have done, uh, we have shown the performance of the parallel two-point block methods. It's suitable to solve for large system of ODE using variables that size on parallel computer. But in 2006, we had to implement our parallel across the method. Okay, there are two types of parallel. We have parallel across the method and we have parallel across the system. So in 2006, we have implemented the parallel across the method. And I will show you later the difference of those two. And in 2010, what we have done is that the two-point block method, well, this, this two-block uh, method is uh, slightly different. Okay, I will show you. Where for, uh, in 2010, what we have done is that we have implemented parallel across the system. Okay, so you will see that why we can't use parallel across the method for this second approach. Okay, so like I mentioned to you, I'm going to describe the parallel across the method and so across the system for this uh, method that we propose. And also the approach will involve exporting concurrent function relations within a method an example of parallel across the method. Okay, so parallel across the method is where, as you know that when we have the calculation, it will involve function evaluation. Okay, so when we want to apply the parallel across the method, so that means we will divide the function evaluation into each processor doing the task. Okay, for example, if we have four processor, okay, so four processor, four processor. Uh, will have their, uh, their part okay, for solving the calculation. Okay? And then the second one is parallel across the system. Uh, it's a technique which solves simultaneously over a large number of equations. Okay, for this second one, we will tackle the, uh, the system of equation itself. Okay? So the first one, our approach is where uh, we tackle uh, the approach that we use uh, depend on the method itself. Okay, that's the first idea that we have. Okay, for example, uh, we did uh, in my research together with Dr. Omar Sulaiman, we come up with the uh, four-point block method. So four-point block method, we use four processor, and also we can use two processor where each processor will, will compute each point. Okay? Each, uh, that means it has been assigned to uh, get its own task uh, according to the point. Okay, so I think my students, they, they will see this all the time. <laughs> Just a brief intro. So, uh, for my um, uh, my slot, there will be no mathematics. Uh, there's no worms like uh, the guys now. <laughs> okay. So this is just the idea. Actually, this idea is from Dr. Omar Sulaiman. He's uh, my um, my advisor. We search together with him. So we divide uh, the interval into a block. So this example of the two point block. So that means we have y n plus one, y n plus two. At the point x m plus one, x m plus two will be compute simultaneously. So this is the general idea. Okay, so that means when it moves along intervals, so it will give us a uh, two answer, one at a time. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, formula. Okay, as uh, from the previous interval. So as you can see here, 
we have the R inside because the interval there's an R there because we want to remain for the variable step size. So we have at yn plus 1 and yn plus 2. Okay, and we integrate from uh, xn yeah, from xn. Okay, so this is just a, a brief uh, idea for the uh, step size strategy. Okay, so uh, if you do the the calculation that involves the interval, you will see that as you double the step size, the ratio R will be 0 0.5. If it's constant, R is 1, and if step failure, R is 2. Okay, so this is just a very simple idea. Okay, if you just just substitute along the interval, you will see the ratio. It will be changed from 0 0.5 and then 1 and 2. It's up on us how we want to program to choose the best step size. And our idea is that it should remain constant, the step size, for at least two blocks before we consider the next step, step to be double. Because we also have to uh, take care uh, for the accuracy of the method. Okay, so now, if you look at this uh, formula, we have predicted we have character because it's multi-step method. Okay, so um, so we have predicted also in block, character also in block. Okay, so now the predictor formula, as you can see, that's why um, this is how I start actually. So I want to share with you because I'm not a parallel programming person. Okay, so when I want to do the parallel, I have to study uh, my program itself. How is the flow in my program? Is the is the passing independent? Is the passing dependent? Okay, if it depends on the other, that's very difficult for us to parallel. Okay, so the data must be independent. Okay, so here as you can see, okay, I have here the particular, so this is YP, YP. So the rest actually, uh, this all is from the character. So I put a C here. And from the second point, all is the character. That means after I finish calculate the uh, predictor, I will get the function equation uh, for the predictor. Okay, next. Okay, so now, okay, I want to show to you here. Okay, this is first iteration, this is second iteration. Okay, as you can see, uh, this is in character. Previously, it was in the predictor. Okay, so hopefully you follow what I'm trying to explain. So let me, this is the predictor, this is the predictor. So these two values depend from the previous <coughs> formula. And then I have here also for n, uh, f n plus 2, f n plus 1 also from the, from the predictor. So the rest is character. Okay. So this is my program, okay, the method that we have. So now when I finish update the YC, that means I will have I will update the function iteration. So that uh, it will go for the second iteration. So when I go for the second iteration, that means the predictor previously will become will use the current or the latest value from the first iteration. So now it becomes C. Okay? And then I have this function equation. So I will push for this current or the latest value for y n plus 1, y n plus 2. Okay, so uh, we as a researcher, we should master our program. We should know how is the flow of the program. Then we can do the parallel programming. Okay, so now this is uh, the parallel implementation. Okay, what we are going to do. So now each point Okay, each point in the predictor and the character formula can be assigned to a single processor within a block and perform the computation simultaneously in parallel. And they are independent of each other. Okay, why do you think that I can say that it's independent of each other? Okay, if I look at the first... Okay. Is there any of from the first point that needs to be substituted into this formula on the right hand side? Is there any of this? I have y p n plus one. Do I have any of the p here? I don't have. 
So that means it can be uh, be on its own. That means the first point can take the first processor. The second point can take the second processor. Because you have you have to well when I'm doing this we have to be we have to be the brain of the processor. Right Wu? She has experienced it. So for example now I'm I'm going to use two processors. So I have to think, okay, the first processor will take this, second processor will take this. I must make sure that it won't overlap. Can they do it simultaneously? So I have to think about that. Okay, so now if you look, that means I can do that because it is not depend on each other. I mean, it can be complete on its own. Okay, so here as you can see, the first processor, okay, the processor, uh, usually the first processor uh, it will have its own uh, number, it will be zero. Then processor, yeah, the second will be processor one and so on. So here you can see that processor zero will take YPN plus one, that means the predictor. Processor one will take the second, uh, the second one for the predictor. And then we have the evaluation here. Okay. Okay, the evaluation, then come the synchronization point. Okay, why we need to have the synchronization point? Because as you, you now you know that it will the, the calculation will be very fast, so that means it will compute. But yes, if you look at the character formula, this value will come from the previous iteration. And these two also from the previous iteration. But I did mention to you the n plus one will be computed by the processor zero. N plus two from the processor one. So that means if I don't have the synchronization, that means it will go very fast. The calculation will be very fast. That means which processor comes first. Uh, before this formula character, it will enter the formula. That means it will continue doing YN plus 1C for zero processor. Okay, YN plus 1P will, will, uh, will be used by the zero processor. And then when it finish doing the predictor, it will straight go to the character. Yes, for the YN, because we have assigned the first formula, processor zero will in charge. Okay, second point, the uh, processor one will be in charge. So therefore, if I let it just go like that, it might use, that mean, this one and plus one, a one and plus two might not be ready yet. It won't finish yet. You know, that mean, we might say that, well, they should be doing it simultaneously, but, well, sometimes, and one of the processors might be ahead of the other. So therefore, it might use a different value. So that's why I need to have here a synchronization. Okay. So synchronize, it means that it, lets, it works like a barrier. Okay, like a barrier where it lets one line, that means, for example, uh, it might be processor zero reach here first, but yet it has to wait for processor one reach here also. So both of them reach at the same level, they interchange the, uh, uh, the, uh, the value that they carry, then proceed for the character. Because I have to experience this. I try where I did not put the synchronization. Okay, I try not to use the synchronization, but I got a different answer. Okay, I got different answers, so that's why I have to use the synchronization. Okay, so that means we have to synchronize. 
So the processor will wait there and then when it reach, that means all has been updated, then it will continue. It won't wait very long. This will be very fast. And when the second processor reach that, so they will move simultaneously. Okay, for step two, the same, where we have processor zero uh, for the one and plus one, the first point, and processor one for the second point, the same, and then we have the signalization. Okay, so this is for the character. Okay, as you know, we need to have the synchronized also. For this is first iteration. Okay, this is first iteration. Okay, what happened if I did not have the synchronization here? Because I have a loop. Because there's a uh, because I do the iteration for convergence. Okay, what do you think will happen if I did not put the synchronization here? What will happen? Come back to process. Pardon? So maybe come back to to processor for to step one. To step one. Okay. I mean, uh, mean? Back to, to yes, okay, it might use the, yes, it will use the predict solution, correct. Okay, so that means, i show you just now, this is the first iteration, on translation, I have the synchronization here. If I do not have the synchronization, that means, it might use the predict value here, F F plus 2. So it might use the P here. Okay, so that's why I have to synchronize. So that means all the updated ones, it reach at that level, then it proceed. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, that we the numerical method, not the what, not the parallel person. Yes. Um, yes. Yes, because uh, before we go for the parallel, we have our sequential program. That means the program without the, uh, yes, we do not use the processor. That means uh, we have our best program that give, our, give us the best accuracy. Okay, so you have your point also, um, Dr. Farana, where why I did not use, this is the P, why did I don't use this? because it will affect uh, the result from the method that I propose. Okay, so that's why I still want to use the latest value for F. Yes. Uh, I think I think the the, uh, the parameter looks like the same as the Gauss iteration method. Yes, that's why actually uh, well Gauss header is next one. Yeah. Uh, this is um, still Jacobi. Uh, no, 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 I mean uh, the parallel. parallel. Oh, the parallel, yes. Ah, okay, yes. Okay, okay I finished with this one. Okay, so this is an uh, example of PDE. Okay, just want to show and share with you. So that means we have the, uh, a large number of expressions. Okay, so this is just a result to share with you. But because of uh, the method that I show you here, uh, share with you is a method of two points. So therefore, this is the limited limitation of uh, our approach because we only can use two processor. Okay, when I have three point method, I can use three processor, four point method, four processor or two processor. Okay, so that is the limitation. But uh, I just want to share to you with you the result. Okay, this is the sequential. The P is the parallel result. So you can see that uh, this is the function expiration. You can see that it's half. It is half. The total step is still the same. Okay. And we must check that uh, the maximum, the error is the same with the sequential. Okay. We must check that. Okay. So here I just show to you the timing. With the timing, as you can see, uh, we have uh, the equation at 4,000, 4, 8,000, and 80,000 here. Okay, if you look here because of two processor, of course the result well is improved when we do the parallel. Okay, but when we have the timing, of course we can see that it's lesser. 
as the thorax getting smaller. Okay, because when we when we increase the number of equations, that means the compression will be very expensive and it's worth it to go for parallel. Okay? Maybe you can see it clearly. Okay, here we have the spira and you calculate the efficiency. This is the formula that we're going to use and it's also in the literature. Okay, then if we calculate the spira and efficiency, then we can see uh, why we need parallel when we when we have a very large equation. When equation is uh, less, it's not worth it. Okay, now you can see here. Okay, so I just showed to you at 8,000 and 80,000 as you can see. Okay, this is when we using the two processor. Okay, so this is for efficiency. So you can see that it's better when we have large number of equations. Efficiency increase and it's, uh, but as the tolerance getting smaller because the calculation is very is more complicated. Okay, so that's why it's worth it. You can see that it approach almost 99% efficiency, almost 100%. So it's worth it. Okay, so I don't know if uh, there's any people that can parallel a very small. Uh, ODE. I'm not sure how they do it, okay? but we should parallel for a very large data because it's very expensive. Okay? So you can see here, okay, um, uh, the, the above line is where the equation is 80,000. And when, and as you can see, that it approach to, okay, if, uh, in the literature, if we use two processor, that means the spira, uh, the linear spira is two. Okay, so as you can see here, as we increase the equations, so we almost approach two, maybe one point nine nine something. Okay. Okay. So now I move to okay. Uh, this another idea. Okay. Uh, it's still a block method. Only the difference is that. The formula that we're going to uh, uh, going to develop, okay, where the difference is that the second point, yn plus two, compared to the previous uh, method that I show you, 2006, yn plus two we integrate from xn to xn plus one, but for this approach, for this method, we integrate from x n plus 1 to x n plus 2. Okay, so that's the difference. So here, as you can see, this is the second point. So it's equal y x n plus 1. So the, the previous, the previous is, here is y n, y x n. Okay, so you can see that we can use the Jacobi iteration. Okay, because of this formula, uh, we can't implement the one that we had previously. Okay, we can't use the parallel across uh, the method. Okay, we can't because now we have gauss sidle iteration compared to the previous is Jacobi iteration. Okay, so as you can see, why is this gauss sidle? Okay, because yeah, this is y c n plus one. I need to to put it here. Okay, into that point. And then y c n plus one, I will find the f for the letters uh, n plus one, and I will put it here. Uh, this is the c. Okay, compared to the previous one here, it's still p. Okay, so it looks like well different from the previous approach. Okay, uh, we try to do the parallel well. It's not exactly because now it's calculator. So you can see that both equations it depend on each other. Okay, so I hope that you can see the the clear picture what I'm trying to explain to you. So therefore now I can't assign each processor to handle uh, first point and second point. Okay, because it depends on each other. Okay, so now we have another technique parallel across the system. Okay. Okay, there's a slightly error here. It should be... I times L. I 
5 times L plus 1. It's not that, it should be 2. Sorry, there's a typing mistake. Okay, now the parallel technique. So, then we are thinking of uh, doing the parallel process system where what we're going to do is now, compared to the previous approach where we uh, we assign uh, the x, different value of x to handle, uh, to handle the task okay, by each processor. But now, our idea is that to each processor will run essentially the same program on each share of the equations. So now we are going to distribute the equations among the processor. Okay, so that means if I have uh, 6,000, for example, I have 6,000 equations, so it means that if I use 6 processor, so if you look here, I have L equal N over P. For example, I have equation N is 6,000. So I'm going to use P is 6, for example. I'm going to use 6 processor. So my L will be 1,000. So that means each processor start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. They will handle their own 1,000 equations. So, this is, uh, we will put it in the loop, okay, the I processor, so that we will have processor 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if you look here, I is the processor. So, that means, here it will take, this is 0, so I will have So, the first until... And then the second processor, processor number one. So processor number one will take one o one until from here. Okay. So I I is one. So this will be one o one until six thousand. This is how we divide the system. So each processor will handle its own equations. So that's. How we try to parallel the second uh, method. Okay, so this is continuum. Okay. Okay. So here, all processor have to exchange, exchange their required computer values at step one. Okay. So we look at this step one before calling the function iteration. Okay, so now you can see that we have processor 0, processor 1 until uh, processor 5. Okay, because it starts from 0. So that means we have, so I, I, I just take this example. So I have 6 processor from 0 until 5. Okay, so it will calculate its own uh, equations. Each will take 1000 equations. But yet here, there's an exchanging of computed values between processors. Why do you think that I need this? Before we go for the function relation. Okay, uh, actually you, you can look at your... Uh, okay, at the function relation, you, you know that we have something like this and so on. You can go up to 6,000. Eh? <coughs> okay, maybe your your formula you have y1 minus y2 or something. Or maybe uh, y11 minus y20 or something. The, the system of ODE. Okay, so therefore, if I assign here, you can see that processor 0 will only handle equation 1 until 1,000. That means y1 until 1,000. 
processor one from one to one until two thousand. Okay, maybe I can put here just to just to highlight it. Okay, so therefore this processor it compute very fast. Okay, so but it will happen where if the first the first processor that is zero, if it reach the function equation, it might compute, but this equation had, will be handled by this processor. Okay, so this is, well, I, I'm telling you my experience when I try to do the research because we are not the programming person, not the computer science person. So that means you must uh, alert of how is the problem that you're going to solve. Okay, so that's why here I need to exchange the value between processor. We need to have this, or else we will get different answer, totally different answer without the, the parallel processor. Okay, so that's why it's good that we have to check. Yes. So then, okay, we have the function equation. Okay, then I proceed to uh, this is step two. Okay, so this is the character. Okay, that means the processor can uh, because it's independent, so they can finish the uh, use uh, solve the character formula where we divide the equations. Okay, this should be the same with the predictor. So then again we have to have these computed values between processor here. Okay? Uh, and then here we will have the function variation. Okay? So here exchanging of computed value between processor. Uh, I still did not uh, did not mention to you uh, what's the command that we should use. Okay, so actually this should be can use the uh, broadcast. You will learn it tomorrow. Yeah, the uh, MPI barrier, the MPI send, receive. Uh, I think Omo, you familiar with that. <laughs> and MPI broadcast, and you will learn it tomorrow. Okay, now is I, I won't mention uh, those words uh, yet. Maybe tomorrow you will learn. This is just the idea. Okay, so then I have we have the conversion test. So as you can see here at step two. The procedure is executed until conversion, where each processor does the conversion test on its computed values. Uh, so here I have tests where uh, I can run the conversion test uh, on different processor. Okay. So all stages at step one and step two are done simultaneously. Okay. So here at step three, okay, this is step three. We have processor zero. Okay, because to compute the step size, as you know, step size, uh, you think it's worth it to do parallel to compute the step size? If you want to compute the step size, yeah. do you think it's worth it to do parallel? No. Why? Yeah, only one value is only H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I just want you to think. <laughs> because, because tax size is only one value. Yeah. So why you want to do parallel? It will be very expensive. So that's why here I just assign, okay, processor zero. You take this work. Okay, you compute for me the step size. Okay, the rest, please don't do it. Uh, you have another task to do. Okay, so that's why you have to master your own program. How is the flow? Okay. Okay, so this is another example using the radio, uh, radioactive decay chain. Okay, so just to show to you. Okay, so we have uh, the equation 6,000, 80,000, 30,000. But yet we can use more than two processors. Although the method is two point block. Because we parallel across the system, we divide the system of equations. Okay, so this is a different approach from the first one. So as you can see here, this is the result. Maybe okay, this is in second. Okay, this is in second. I think I better show you the uh, in terms of efficiency. Okay, so here, look at the efficiency. 
Okay, so this is uh, where you use the 6,000 equations, 20,000 equations, and 30,000 equations. You can see that it's worth it when we have a very large system of ODE. Okay, so it improves the performance, okay, in terms of timing. And as you can see here, the speed up and efficiency. Okay, so if we have two processors, uh, the ideal speed up is two. If four processor, the ideal speed up is four. Okay, if it's six processor, the ideal speed up is six. So as you can see here, okay, the one that has a very large system of ODE, it will give us a very uh, good efficiency. Okay, so as you can see, the six processor, thirty thousand, we can have efficiency eighty thousand. Okay, why do you think here I have thirty thousand I have six thousand equations okay using two processor why is it one point four six why is it seventy thousand compared to I use six thousand six processor efficiency only forty two percent if you look okay the first row you look at the first row the equation is 6,000. I use two processor. The efficiency is better than six processor. Six processor is 42%. Why do you think? trying to highlight here 6,000 equations we use two processor efficiency is better compared to six processor where efficiency is 42 percent less we well sometimes we thought well when I use more processor I should get a better efficiency but now what happened yeah yeah Yes, that's good. You you must know the processor. They are talking to each other. <laughs> they are communicate with each other. So if we have six processor, yeah, like we also while we are working, we are also talking with our friends. Well, the same with these six processor. They are talking to each other. Okay, when they are talking, they are communicate with each other. So that's why we won't have better efficiency. Compared to this, only two processors, but efficiency is excellent. Better, 17%, because less communication. <laughs> but, yes, well, because they are very busy, 6,000 equations they have to solve. Only two workers. Compared to that one, 6,000 equations, we have six workers. Well, they, they are busy talking, okay? So at least we know that uh, the number of equations, the number of processor influence our results, okay? The computing time. So in general, the speed up varies from uh, the method that we have from 1.39 to 1.99 when you're using the two processor. And 2.10 to 3.95 when you're using four processor. And also six processor, well, it's varying from 2.47 to 5.6 time for solving problem 2. So in conclusion, okay, so we have discussed a parallel algorithm for solving large system of ODE based on the uh, two-point block method. So the codes we have implemented based on parallel cross method and also parallel cross method. And also, uh, a reminder for you, if you are interested uh, to do the parallel implementation, okay, we have a few conditions that we need to uh, really take care of. There is expensive for the function evaluations, the large dimension sizes of the given problem, and also the long integration interval. That means the interval itself 
Okay. For example, if you have the problem, it's only from zero to one. Well, you have to think is it worth it or not to do parallel. Okay. Sometimes interval you have to solve up to zero until one hundred. That is maybe more worth it. Okay. Thank you.